Okay, hopefully this shouldn't be a, a long one. Not like the last one anyway. Have we cleaned down before we start. We'll see why in a sec. Because it is more brake components which we want clean. Right, that's a slave cylinder from a rear of a mini. Um, Oop, light's gone all shiny on the desk. That'll soon go when it clears. Uh, there's its wheel cylinders, uh, its pistons. This is from the back again of a 1990, I think. 1989, 1990. Um, Mini 1000. Um, one way round. There you go, in that way round. And I've already stripped it out, as you can see, stripped it out of the car. Um, and these actually I stripped down and put in storage some time ago. Um, I did a basic clean up on them then. And I've now got, oops, hopefully, what is the right wheel cylinder repair kit. I think it is, three quarter inch. I've got specified for this year if the right person, the last person fitted the right wheel cylinder. That kit should fit. So we are just going to... Um, dunk these in the ultrasonic cleaner, clean clean up these parts, get all the oil off them that I put on to stop them rusting when I strip them. And then we will put them back together, rebuild them with the new seals, and then we'll put them in this we'll put it in this bag to keep it nice and, and clean and hopefully rust free until I need it. Right, let's first thing. Ultrasonic cleaner. I'll just quickly show you the ultrasonic cleaner. Let me grab the camera. Yeah, uh, might have to do it that way up. Well, that's where I started recording. Um, this was a cheapie from somewhere or other. My wife bought it for me for Christmas one year, a couple of years ago. It's had quite hard use. What I use in it is a mixture of water and I wonder if I've got some um, hang on, hang on. Under here. Ah. This stuff. Pour 15 cleaner degrees. So it's about 80% water and the rest is some of this. As you can see, this comes in a 5 litre or a 3.78, 1 gallon American. Um, 1 gallon container. Um, you don't actually use that much of it. This has done me a couple of years. Let me put that back under there. So we're going to put the parts in here. Yeah. You have to be a little bit careful with this clean as you grease on your fingers. When it's concentrated, it's it's quite alkaline. You can feel it sort of um slimy on your fingers, a little like caustic soda. Um so you do need to be a little bit careful with the stuff. Um let's just turn it on. You will hear that horrible noise because this thing interferes with the audio. Um, because of the, the frequency that it's running at. So headphone users warning now. Um, we're going to turn it on just so you can start to see what it does then I'll shut you off and bring you back in a bit. Sonic's finished. We'll drag the bits out. One of them and two of them. Hopefully, I've had the worst of the muck taken off them. Just try my hands, get this slimy stuff off them. Right, let's have a little look. Too much muck at the bottom of that groove. It's okay. If you can hear. 
hear the noise in the background but it's windy here today and I'm out in my workshop which is at the bottom of the garden and it's making me roof rattle a bit okay that'll do right now while these sat in storage they did get a little bit of um, a little bit of rust started in the bore. It was just the very lightest surface rust, but I will just whiz down there with the with the bore hone. Now, if you are rebuilding wheel cylinders and you don't have a bore hone, it's a good idea to to invest in one if you're going to do any sort of reasonable amount of maintenance on brakes and things because they do come in quite handy um, they do allow you to clean up the the wheel cylinder bore because sometimes you get some muck just caught on there and it just yeah you get some muck caught and it, it's um, pretty difficult to because you, you don't want to get down there with a screwdriver and scrape it. Um, this is my cylinder home kit. It was again one of those relatively cheap eBay purchases. Some of the stones are getting a bit tired now. But, um, basically we're going to stick them in the drill. Stick this thing in the drill. Oops, wrong way. nice and tight. We're going to oil the, the bore of the cylinder somewhat. Put that in there hopefully and still get to the point where it's springy. These things can be a bit fun. And it's not really springy. work that in and out a few times, don't go crazy with it, otherwise the otherwise you'll change the size of the bore. That looks like it'll do the job. Okay so let's get a fresh bit of tissue and clean there and have a little look. Tissue. Trusty, very old bottle of three in one oil away. It's one of those staples, isn't it? If you have this, certainly WD 40 company, Milton Keynes. If you have that stuff in the States, if uh, you don't, I'm sure you have something very similar. You can just look down the bore. That flash rust is pretty much gone some marking there still but not it's just a bit of marking on the bore okay if you had scores or gouges down that bore you would have to scrap the wheel cylinder it's, um, some people say it's a false economy to, to put these cylinder kits in but um, certainly with classic cars parts are getting harder to find these days and especially, you know, the modern wheel cylinders, I don't know, these were on the car for, what, 18 months and they started to leak. Um, and when I took the, the cylinders off and had a look at them, the rubber on the, on the lip seal, let me just get one of those out and show you. These are new ones, but the rubber all around the edge here had worn away, and they just didn't didn't work. Whereas these wheel cylinders, are, the actual cylinder is still perfectly serviceable. But one thing to remember now: we've just used an abrasive, and it will have left quite a lot of muck down the down the bore again. 
and even if I try and wipe it out with my finger like this for time immemorial it'll still be there'll still be muck down there tiny particles so this is going to go back in the ultrasonic for just a couple of minutes and um, hopefully we'll have got all the rubbish out and then we can do the rebuild catch you in a minute right that's done take it back out of there and a fresh bit of tissue because we're not going to use the same bit that just had abrasive on it because that would be silly we'll do that with an ultrasonic cleaner so a fresh bit have a little look yeah that looks fine so if there's any deep gouges and scores discard it um, if there's any particularly scores that run along the line of the bore as if this as if the cylinder had picked up a bit of grit because that will allow fluid to leak out um, if there's some slight marking around that way it's not quite as bad I have to come in and tell me that she's gone to pick my son up from college. Try and get as much of this water off as we can. coming off there. I think we've done a fairly good job of cleaning down the bore. FH and an S and three dots. I wonder what that means. Two dots on that side. Can't see any writing. Perhaps that's the die number from when they cast it. So if they get a, a fault on them in the future, they can see which of the mould tools are faulty. Right, that looks okay. Well, that's the addition of a rubber bung, which we're going to stick in at the end. Right. Let's have a look at these seals. These are two seals. They should be identical. He says, hopefully. Okay. Now, remember that the piston pushes this way. So the, the pistons push out. So the lip seals have got to be that way. So that when the fluid comes against them, it opens them up. Okay, so we are going to lubricate again with, this is dot four brake fluid I've got here. I keep a can in the shed for this sort of work, or a bottle for this sort of work. Right, hands a quick wipe. Okay, so we're going to put this one on that way round. So let's get some brake fluid again. Brake fluid is one of those things you don't really want in your hands for too long, but it doesn't sort of kill you. But sort of, yeah. These can be quite fun to get over because they're quite a long stretch and you need to be careful that you don't use any tools on these. If you do, you're liable to damage the seal. Okay, while we're here, we're going to coat the rest of this with brake fluid. Okay, and let's do this one. If you do use any tools, you're liable to just nick the the surface of the sealing surface, you know, this this surface around here. If you do, you're pretty much, well, 
shortened the life of the thing to somewhere like massively reduced it. So we're now going to lubricate the cylinder. Don't worry where you get it. All over is good. Okay, now we've got to get these in the bores. There's a lead in here, you can see. And we've got the cup seal there. Now, if you're just going to shove that, you can curl it inside. So if you work it like that, work it round, and make sure you pull it up and down a couple of times, you should seat that properly. Let's put some more fluid on this side. So we're just going to push it in and work it around and it should pop into the into the cylinder. I'll push it in and pull it out and turn it. If you feel any problem, take it out and put it back in again. Okay. That's our two our two pistons in. Plenty of brake fluid in there. In fact, I am actually going to pour a little extra in there. You can see it coming up the up the port. I wish I had a block for that, but I don't. I'll just have to rely on the bag doing its job. And our two covers. These things, when you're actually working on the car, can be a right what name to get back on. Particularly if you didn't, um, if you didn't remove the brake, uh, didn't remove the wheel cylinder from the car, because this lies straight up against the back plate. Trying to get that lip in is really hard. So, once again, we'll try not to use tools. being a that's it so that's got it in the groove that's took that's put the let's put it into that first groove there now we've got to get the skirt over there this bit's not not so critical Fair. This is a dust shield, so it doesn't actually perform any of the useful function, as in you know the braking of the car. So I am just going to cheat, get a blunt and screwdriver, and just run it around there to help ease that over. Lovely. Now we're going to push that through. Expose the other side. Plenty more brake fluid around. Yeah, let's get that right in the bottom of the groove. Okay, I'm doing this a bit ham fisted on the bench. You could stick this in the vice which would make life a bit easier if I hold the darn thing still okay that's in Strongest fingers in the world. Job done. So it goes in the car like that, and the wheel cylinder and the brake shoes are vertical, just to be neat and tidy. Right, we've rebuilt a wheel cylinder. As 
one in a minute. I've got another one to do, but I'll do that one off camera. Worst of this off. Now to try and stop this going rusty, I'm going to put it in the plastic bag that the seal kit came in. And we are job done. In the middle. Job done. Cheerio.